Hello, and welcome to this tutorial on how to turn a black and white picture that you might have, an image of drawn graphic of some kind, into smooth line art, sort of like a comic book. Um, it will be turning it into a vector graphic which is scalable, which lets you reduce the dimensions of it or grow it, uh, enlarge it without losing the quality. That's what vector graphics, that's their strength. And it will be creating an SVG file, but you'll also be able to create a PNG file from it as well, which will have the same uh, look, you just won't be able to resize it without losing quality. Well, the first thing you do is find you a picture. Let me show you first. Uh, so here's what some of mine look like. There's one that's Joss Whedon with Hawkeye's bow. There's David Duchovny. Uh, but though you get the idea. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to find a picture, say this one. Now I'll show you that it's, see it's all jagged. It was done, I, I made this actually with Photoshop, although I've made other things with GIMP too, so it doesn't matter where the picture comes from. But it needs to be a PNG file, uh, and it can be jagged like this because these are all going to smooth out. So you want it to be of a, a good size. You want at least like a 500 or a thousand pixels. It's best to get 1,200 to 2,000 pixels with a 300 pixel resolution of the file, so you can really get a lot of quality and depth a lot of detail in the lines, but uh, anyway, as long as you've got your picture, you just make sure that you have Inkscape installed. Inkscape is a free vector program. It will convert pictures to vectors. It will let you draw and paint and things like that and create vectors from scratch also. I mainly use it just to convert pictures that I've done in Photoshop. So once you've installed Inkscape, which is free, just right click, do open with, if you're using Windows something or other, I'm not sure about other programs, but Inkscape is available on pretty much all platforms, and select Inkscape, and it will take, actually it won't take very long at all, and a dialog box will pop up asking if you want to link or embed the image and you want to embed it, so there's that. And it will bring up its environment and your picture will be on a canvas matching its size. This is the canvas, this is square. Nothing outside this canvas will be saved or, or uh, be valid, basically, so make sure you keep your picture inside the canvas. I'm gonna enlarge this, and you have to click somewhere in your picture on the ink, on the black, to select it. Make sure it's selected with, this little, with the little arrows here. Now I'm gonna go up here to Path and Trace Bitmap. And there's different things you can do. You can you can trace bitmaps on color pictures also, which I've had varying levels of success with. Usually you want to select colors and set them to a higher number of scans, like 32 or 64. But for this, I'm just doing brightness cutoff. It starts off at 0 0.450. I usually change mine to about 8, which will make these lines uh, bigger. It will, it will kind of uh, exaggerate the lines, but it will also smooth them. Uh, now I go to the next tab, which I've got suppressed speckles, smooth corners, and optimized paths. These all start out marked, and I leave them marked. Suppressed speckles, too, is not very much. It'll only suppress a few pixels that are errant or kind of sticking out of your picture or somewhere else on the page. I up this to four. That might be too much for some pictures, so you kind of want to know your own level of detail. Smooth corners. I always figure it's a good thing, so I up it as much as I can, because I want this picture to be smooth. Uh, it only goes to 1.34, so whenever you type 4 in, it will automatically adjust. And optimize paths, it says with the tooltip, try to optimize paths by joining adjacent Bezier or Bezier curve segments. And it starts out at 0.20, I'm not sure why, it seems like you'd want a higher number than that, so I go to 4 and hit also. Whoops. And I hit update, which is supposed to bring up a picture of what your picture is going to look like, and it doesn't. 
Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. I don't know why. But you just hit OK. Now watch this as this picture changes down here when I hit OK. Now we got heavier. And the reason for that is, besides it creating the new picture, it's also stacked on top of the other one. So click in the ink and drag the new picture off of the old one. Now I'll zoom in some so you can see. See the jagged lines from the old picture, the original? These are all smoothed out and rounded off and look, to me, really nice. It just looks more like a uh, comic book or uh, at least a coloring book, depending on what you're going for. So I'm going to delete the old one here. It's not actually deleting it off my computer, just out of this environment. Now the next thing you do is click back on it, make sure it's selected. Go up here to the wrench over the piece of paper, which is edit properties of this document. It'll bring up this thing where you can resize things and choose different paper uh, dimensions. But I'm wanting orientation and resize page to content. I click that and open it up. And I hit resize page to drawing instead of filling out any of these things. And it's going to put my picture on my canvas. The canvas is now resized to fit the picture. Now, something else you can do with the picture, and it depends on if what you're wanting. If you want a more stylized version with less detail, it's rounder, but it's sort of, I don't know, I don't know much about art, maybe Art Nouveau. You can also go to Path where you do the Trace Bitmap, but instead go all the way to the bottom or near it and do Simplify. And that's not too bad. That took out a lot of, see at the very bottom it says how many nodes there are, 315 nodes in root. So this picture, this, this graphic, this scalable SVG file, scalable vector graphic has 315 nodes in it right now. If I tried to edit it, a lot of little tiny dots would show up and you could move them all around to do things with them. But I don't want to do that. I want to go back and get my, my last picture, so I'm going to undo. And that looks more like what I want. It still, you can see his lips a little better. Now, if I click on him and go down here, it says there's 945 nodes in root, which still isn't too bad. This is actually a fairly small picture. I am used to working with a lot larger. What you want to do is find a picture that's 2,000 pixels, if you can find one, or enlarge one. Um, if, if it doesn't... I mean, there is a certain limit to Inkscape. It, I mean, it, it can smooth lines a lot, but if you enlarge something that's like 100 pixels, obviously it's not going to look very good. So you want a large picture because then you can shrink it down and the detail will stay in the, in the image regardless of what size it is. But so now that I've got this, I go over here, I go to File, and I go to Save As, and I'm going to I'm going to add an SVG suffix to this file name to differentiate it from the other one that I have the original. It's all jagged, just a ping or a PNG. Uh, I'm going to do that for. Uh, obviously, I don't need that because I know it's an SVG here, because I'm going to save it as a .SVG. But I'm going to do that because I'm also going to save it as a PNG with that same level of uh, quality. Now, I won't be able to scale it as well, and I've actually already done this, so I'm replacing it, but it's the same principle. I won't be able to scale it without losing quality, the PNG. I won't be able to do that. But it will still look good at, at this size. I'm, I'm going to have a PNG that looks just like this. So I'm going to go over here after I've saved my SVG. And I'm going to go to PNG right there. And I'm going to say, and now I'll know. See, and that's what, that's what these are. I've got SVG. This lets me know that this picture is, a PN, is an SVG quality PNG. This is the one I did before it. This was the source. And that's what I that's what I do that for. That's just my naming convention. You can do whatever you want. And I replace them. And that's all there is to it. <coughs> you can go out and look and see that you've got your head right there. And you can 
click on your SVG PNG, and there it is. Nice smooth lines, um, black and white, suitable for uh, coloring books or doing your own editing if you want to color this in. Use shading and things like that and give this a real, uh, a, uh, a real full treatment to get it to looking almost realistic, which you can do. I've done that before. Uh, let me see if I can find one. I've done quite a few of these, so there's quite a few to go through here. I was quite proud of the one I did that turned out to use a lot of color. Here's some of the ones I've done. There's probably one of my best. Uh, I turned it into a black and white PNG first and then used some techniques that I, uh, a friend had given me good link to learn how to do some coloring. <laughs> I don't remember it offhand, but at the time I kind of knew what I was doing and that turned out really well. And I have, I have my various skills. Sometimes I'm good at things, sometimes I'm bad, but it turns out okay most of the time. That was a PNG I converted. I just, I colored it in uh, Photoshop and then just converted it with Inkscape. And you can see it's still a little rough. That one's quite a bit better. Uh, I did my own head. Which I thought turned out pretty well. And then there's me. Which, that's me wearing a shirt with my logo. I don't have one of those, but maybe someday. But you can do all kinds of things with that. And... Anyway, that's, that concludes this tutorial, and I hope this helped you and kind of explained Inkscape and converting pictures into scalable vector graphics or clip art or line art or whatever you want to call it, and good luck to you.